God of mercy and compassion, we have sinned in what we have thought, said and done, and in what we have failed to do. We have sinned through ignorance and weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. who is both power and love. Forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he'd come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've set you an example, and you also should do as I have done to you. 
Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now may the words on my lips and the meditation in my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Monday Thursday is the institution of the Lord's Supper, and that's the thing that we do every week in our tradition. In it, Jesus said two things which became fundamental pillars of the church. The first, this is my body, this is my blood. And the second, which is intrinsically related to it, the new commandment. You must love one another as I have loved you. They will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And what a strange scene that is. I'm always aware of the, the women who would definitely have been there but are not included in the story, who would have uh, ritually prepared the food, who would have cooked it and would have taken their customary and important roles in the Passover feast. But when we're in church, uh, it's an uncomfortable day for many because we are not used to washing one another's feet, showing one another our feet and touching feet. It's not cultural to us, but we do it because for priests, you cannot be a priest unless you are also a deacon, unless you take the role of the servant. There are not many times in my life when I've had to wash someone's feet. When I worked in a nursing home, I had to wash all of somebody. I know how undignified that can be for the person. But there was only one time when I remember washing somebody's feet and it's a time I'll never forget. And I can't work out why I've never told this story. It was 11 years ago now, we were in Linlithgow and we had just adopted Gavin. And I'd just come back from adoption leave and the, the week that I came back from adoption leave was Holy Week. The rectory was away from church, uh, so we didn't get much passing traffic, but on this day, which was the Thursday of Holy Week, somebody did call around and Katie was out. Uh, so it was just me in the house with a very newly adopted four-year-old. And this guy came around wanting food and money. He was maybe 20. Easter was late, so it was quite sunny outside. So I kept Gavin in the house and I sat out uh, outside with the guy whose name I can't remember if he ever told me. I got in some food and some drink and sat outside with him and, and my goodness, he stank. His clothes were a mess and his shoes were a mess. I hope, and, and I think that it didn't show ill grace, but I, I do think I felt it. There was my newly adopted son in the house and in the whirlwind of Holy Week, I was way behind just coming back from, from leave and this was Maundy Thursday and I had a service and a sermon to prepare and I didn't need this extra thing. But he asked me if I had any spare shoes, so I got him to take off his shoes and his socks and his feet smelled not just bad, but uh, of infection. His feet were a mess. So I got a water, some water in a bowl and a clean cloth and uh, said he really needs to wash his feet and he didn't want to because he knew it was going to hurt. So I did, and I did it as gently as I could, but it did hurt. And I got some ointment and put it on and we sat there for a while, the pain receded and his feet dried off. And I wondered just how far he'd walked on those feet. And I wondered how many people had turned him away. And I wondered why. And I wondered how it can be that a 20 year old can be homeless. But most of all, 
I wanted it to be over because I, had to, I needed to get on. And he wanted to go back to Edinburgh because he thought he had more chance of finding some accommodation there. So I remember I gave him my card so that if he went to Bethany, uh, he could, they could phone me and, you know, I, I could vouch for him. So when Katie came back, he never phoned, by the way, so I don't know whether he went. Uh, so when Katie came back, I bought a ticket for him on the train, put him on the train, and that was it. He, he didn't, sort of, he wasn't effusively grateful because he was just too busy concentrating on surviving, which is fair enough. So I got back to my sermon and my service and it was all fine. And it was in the evening, only in the evening at the service, when I was washing a very well manicured and freshly prepared foot, that I realised that what I was doing liturgically I had done for real only a few hours before and I felt, I felt a wave of stupidity for not working out. And then I thought, was I really entertaining angels unawares? Was that an angel in disguise? And I went back and I tried to figure out whether I'd done the right things, even if I probably hadn't felt them. It still haunts me a little. You cannot be a priest without first washing feet, feet that are dirty. And you cannot be a servant of the Most High God unless you are prepared to serve all of his children. Jesus ritually washes the disciples' feet and then within the space of 24 hours becomes the ragged people, the lowest of the low. That is the true nature of the God we worship. That is the God that we must imitate. Because maybe there are angels in disguise and maybe they are the ragged people of the world. Because Jesus was.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, maker of light and darkness. In your wisdom you created the world and all that is in it. You gave us ears to heed your voice. You gave us the will to choose your way. You sent Christ, your Son, to reconcile a sinful and lost world to you. In him, enemies were reconciled, debts forgiven and strangers made welcome. You sent your Spirit to sustain us in our earthly pilgrimage as we walk with Christ through the valley of darkness. May we, who by Christ's power follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of his obedience, now offer you our praise with the angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. thanksgiving be to you most loving father for Christ in whom the world is reconciled lifted on the cross his suffering and forgiveness spanned the gulf our sins had made through that dark struggle death was swallowed up in victory that life and light might reign before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the sons of Egypt died, your chosen one, himself the firstborn, freely offered his life. On this night he gathered his disciples in the upper room. He took a towel and washed their feet. He gave them a new commandment to love one another. And he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom made one with him, we offer you these gifts, 
and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be unto you, Lord of all ages, world without end. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sun. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgo forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The table is set, the feast is ready. Holy things for holy people, broken things for broken people. Come, join the feast.
Jesus came with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, sit here while I go to pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Anguish and dismay came over him, and he said to them, My heart is ready to break with grief. Stay here a while with me. He went on a little, fell to his face in prayer, and said, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Yet, not what I will, but thy will be done. He came to his disciples and found them asleep, and he said to Peter, could you not watch with me one more hour? Stay awake and pray that you may be spared at the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to pass me without my drinking, thy will be done. He came again and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time using the same words as before. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Still sleeping, still taking your ease. The hour is nigh. The Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men. Up, let us go forward. The betrayer is upon us. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared, and with him a great crowd armed with swords and cudgels, sent by the chief priests and the elders of the nation. The traitor gave them this sign. The one I kiss is the man. Seize him. And stepping forward at once, he said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, My friend, do what you are here to do. They then came forward, seized Jesus, and held him fast. At that moment, one of those with Jesus reached for his sword and drew it and struck at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to them, Put up thy sword. All who take the sword may die by the sword. Do you suppose I cannot appeal to my father who would at once come to my aid and send twelve legions of angels? But then how could the scriptures be fulfilled? At the same time, Jesus spoke to the crowd. Do you take me for a robber? That I have come out with swords and cudgels to arrest me. Day after day I sat teaching in the temple and you did not lay hands on me. But this has all happened to fulfill what the prophets wrote. Then the disciples all deserted him and ran away. <laughs> 